In this video, we are going to learn about the BFS algorithm, which is a shortcut for Brad's first search. The purpose of the algorithm is to search a graph from a source vertex. Let's see what it means and what BFS gives us. Here we have a graph for example. This vertex for example, S, is the source vertex for the graph search. BFS goes over the vertices by layers, starting from the source vertex S, then moves to the neighbors of vertex S, then moves on to the neighbors of the neighbors, and it goes on. All vertices on one layer have the same shortest distance from S. While scanning the graphs, BFS also saves for each discovered vertex its distance from S distance being the number of edges in the shortest path from S. Here we see the farthest vertex from S as shortest path of length 5. Not only that, BFS also outputs the shortest path from S to all other vertices, which together provide the tree where S is the root and each path on the tree from S to any vertex is the shortest pass between S to that vertex on the original graph. Quite amazing! So let's see the BFS algorithm. BFS algorithm has two parameters, a graph G and the source vertex S. G can be either directed or undirected, and we assume it is represented as adjacency lists. If you are not familiar with adjacency list representations, you are likely to understand the algorithm anyway. But if you want to first get familiar with adjacency list, there is a link in the descriptions of this video to a video that covers this topic. We save two pieces of data for each vertex, D, the distance between S to that vertex, and P the parent of the vertex in the shortest path from S to that vertex, who discover it during the BFS run. It will be more clear soon. At start, we initialize all vertices to have null distance and null parent. We also create an empty queue data structure. We then start the graph search from S as if we discovered it. We set the distance from S to itself to zero and add it to the queue. Now, while the queue is not empty, we do the following. We dequeue the next vertex in first in, first out order and store it in a variable called U. Then we go over its neighbors. For each neighbor, V, we first check if its distance, dv, is null. If so, it is the first time v is discovered, and we need to handle it. Otherwise, it was already discovered, and we ignore it. So if it is null, we set its distance to be the distance of the vertex that discovered it, plus 1. We also save the vertex that discovered it as the parent. We then enqueue v, so it will be also processed later. We'll see an example very soon, so it will be much more clear. But before, let's just talk about the time and space complexity. First note that until the while loop, the time complexity is big O of the number of vertices, for the initialization loop, as all other operations are of constant time. In the while loop, each time we dequeue a vertex, we do a big O of 1 for the dequeue operation, plus big O of the number of outgoing edges for the for loop. An important observation is that each vertex is added to the queue at most once, thanks to the check if the distance is null before handling a vertex. So in total, in the worst case, we go over all of the vertices and their outgoing edges, which gives us big O of V plus E, which is a desirable time complexity in graphs algorithms. 
Regarding space complexity, we need to allocate memory for the queue, which at the worst case can grow to the number of vertices, since each vertex is enqueued once at most, as we said before. So we get big O of V. Okay, let's now run BFS on a graph for example. Here is the BFS algorithm again, and here is the example graphs we are going to use, which is a directed graph with 9 vertices. We name the source vertex S and all others arbitrarily. We'll track here below the order in which BFS will discover the vertices. We start with the first for loop, initializing all D and P properties to null. We then create an empty queue. We will mark with yellow vertices that we've discovered, starting with S, and we set S distance from itself to zero. We then add it to the queue. We'll keep a pointer here for the next item to the queue. Now we enter the Y loop and the queue S. Now we go over S neighbors, starting with R. DR is null, meaning it is not yet discovered, so we discover it. When discovered, we update its distance from S to 1 and also its parent to be S. Then we add it to the queue. We then go over to the second neighbor of S, which is Q. Q is also not yet discovered, so its distance is null. So we mark it as discovered. Update its distance to 1, and its parent to be S, and add it to the queue. There are no more neighbors for S, so we go back to the while conditions, and enter again since the queue is not empty. Vertex R is the next one on the queue. It has only one neighbor, which is Y. Y was not yet discovered, so we mark it, update its distance to the distance of R plus 1, which is 2, and also its parent to be R as the vertex who discovered it. And we add it to the queue. R has no more neighbors, so we start a new iteration of the Y loop, now with vertex Q. We go over the neighbors of Q, starting with X. The distance of X is still null, so we discover it. We update its data and add it to the queue. We move on to the next neighbor of Q, which is M. M is also not yet discovered, so we mark it. We update its data similarly to vertex X, and we add it to the Q as well. We've finished handling the neighbors of Q. So we go back to the while condition again, and we now the Q Y. Y has only one neighbor, which is Z, so we discover Z. Z distance from S is 3, because Y is with distance 2, and Y is also its parent. We've handled Y and we move on to the queue X. X had no neighbors, so we don't enter its for loop at all, and go back to the while condition. We then the queue M, which also doesn't have any neighbors. The next one with the queue is Z. Z has three neighbors, and we start with S. S was already discovered, so D S is not null. It is zero, so we don't pass the if condition. This is where we see that we don't enter again vertices that were discovered. The next neighbor is Q, which like S was already discovered, and its distance is not null, so we move on to the third neighbor of Z, which is N. 
and distance is still null, so we discover it now. Its distance is 4, as the distance of z is 3. We mark its parent to be z and add n to the q. There are no more neighbors, so we go back to the while. We see the q is still not empty, so we the qn. n has no neighbors, so we go back to the while condition. And now the queue is empty, so we finished the BFS run. We see that vertex T was not discovered. This is because it is not reachable from our source vertex S. So its distance and parent are still null. Also note that the parent of S is null, since it was the first one, so no other vertex discovered it. By writing the distance from S in the discovery order, we see the BFS characteristic of scanning layer by layer by starting with the closest vertices to S to the farthest. Lastly, let's see how to retrieve a path between vertex S to other vertex after we ran BFS. We write a pseudocode for getting such paths. We start with an empty list L that will represent the path and set the current vertex to the input V. As long as the current vertex has a parent, we add it to be the first on the list and set the current to be its parent. Eventually, when the parent is null, we check if the current is S. If so, we add S as well to be first and return the list representing the path. If the vertex we ended up with is not S, we return null to specify there is no such path. Let's see an example to make it more clear. Here is our BFS run result on the graph from before. Say we want to find the path between S to N. We start with creating the empty list and setting current to be N. N as a parent, so we add N to the list and set current to be its parent, which is Z. Z also as a parent, so we add Z to the list and set current to be its parent, which is y. Similarly, y also has a parent, which is r. So we add y to the list and update current to be r. r also has a parent, so we add r and update current to its parent, s. s parent is null, so we exit the while. We see we ended up with s, so we add it and return the path that we got. Let's see what happens when we get an input where there is no path. Say we want to find the path between S to T. We start again with creating a list and setting current to T. The parent of T is null, so we don't enter the while at all. We ended up with T, which is not S, so we return null. Thank you for watching. If you like this video, please don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel.